Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. A few days ago, Santee from Arizona Ghost Riders sent me a picture of a holster. He recently picked up an 1851 Navy and he sent me a picture of a holster said he was gonna try to make that particular, this one right here. And when I saw that, I thought, that is a really cool looking holster. So I've got an 1851 Navy and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try too because I like doing that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's really a, it's a pretty unique holster and uh, with the fringe on it and everything, it really looks cool. I don't know that I've really got the outfit to wear with that holster, but yeah, sometimes you need an outfit to go with your holster, especially with the cowboy guns. But anyways, I got some paper here and I've been cutting on it and sketching on it and everything and I'm gonna get a holster made up and this one's gonna take me a little while, so join me. Okay, so here is an 1851. I've already done a video on this gun, so you have seen it before. This is a Pieta. It's the one with the plastic grips on it. And this is what I've come up with so far for my pattern. And it should fit in there pretty good. I am going to put a welt in there so it'll open this up a little bit. I don't want it too big. I think the end here is gonna be plenty big enough. Uh, I did cut out a piece for the welt and I started working on this piece which will be a second layer for the holster this is going to be the suede part that's going to go on the outside of it there and then cut the fringe on it and everything so I'm going to get to working on this thing I'm not going to bore you with pattern making because I may do this two or three times okay I've got my pieces cut out here I cut a different piece of this I want to make it a little bit longer just so this is going to be the area where the fringe is going to be this is where the loop is going to go on the back of it. There's my pattern for my loop. And that'll sew right on the back of that. And this piece right here is just going to be the suede. But I need to sew this all the way through to this. Now that's going to leave me with stitches on the inside of the holster. I really did not want to make three layers. Uh, I did not want to do a lined holster in here because, well, first of all, I'd have to redo my pattern because it's going to take up a lot more space unless I use the thinner leather. But for right now, what I'm going to do is when I put my suede piece on there, I am going to put that on there. I'm going to put my loop on there. I'm going to sew all the way through these three layers, flip it over, sew all the way through these three layers. Then I'm going to sew all the way around here to there. And then I'm going to have to flip that up and continue my stitches all the way around the bottom there. I do need to cut out a toe plug for the bottom of this thing too. And I'm probably going to wait till after I've uh, formed it. That way I can get a better idea of what that toe plug is going to look like because it's going to be somewhat tapered like that. And I should be able to get a better idea of what it's going to be like when I, after I've got it formed and I might not even put a toe plug in it. Uh, and then this is going to be my welt here. I'm going to make this out of, I think I got some nine or 10 ounce leather. I'm going to make that a little thicker and I might actually do two layers on that and then sky them a little bit, taper them off, thin them out as it comes down toward the end there. But this end here is going to end up being really thick. It's going to be, uh, see one, two, three, four, five, six, probably six layers of leather up here by the trigger guard. Uh, this will give me a little bit of a trigger shelf on there so that the trigger should fit in there, something like that. And hopefully it'll work out. Now, there's a lot of pattern makers that do this and um, they don't always get it right on the first try and I don't always get it right either. I've got some holsters that uh, I did not get right but it's okay. It's a learning experience and um, that's how you figure these things out. There's no exact science. There's some people that are way better at it than others and um, I'm not one of those. But anyways, we're going to get the pieces of leather cut out and then we'll get this thing uh, prepped. There is a stamped pattern around the edge on the, pad, on the picture that uh, Santee sent me and I do not have that exact stamp, but I'm only going to stamp from here around to there 
at, to my stitch line anyways because the fringe is going to cover it up and I can't put stitch I can't put uh, a pattern in the suede anyways but there are tiny little seed beads that go all the way around there too and that is going to be a bear to get those in there because I have to stitch the holster together first and then I have to stitch those seed beads in there too okay so I've got all my pieces cut out I've got the leather for the holster I've got the um suede for the fringe and the top part of it i've got my uh welt cut out of i think this is right around uh 10 ounce yep that's right at 10 ounce and the suede of course is very thin it is um oh it's about one and a half ounce and then the actual holster body itself is going to be right at seven ounce yep right at seven and same thing for the little strap on the back of it, seven, cut out of the same piece of leather. And then the toe will be, the toe plug will be uh, the same 10 ounce stuff here. Um, but I've already got my stitch line established on there. I've got my pattern line on here and I've got my stitch line across there because this is gonna get sewn on right across there somewhere and then this will get cut into fringe and I'm probably gonna have to trim this up a little bit because I'm pretty sure the back side is not covered with the fringe so there's a couple things i need to do here i need to get uh, i want to get my pattern on there so i think what i'll go ahead and do is uh, go ahead and case my leather and i like to case the whole thing even though i'm not stamping the whole thing because what happens what i found has happened to me a few times in the past is that if i didn't case the whole thing the leather come out different shades where it was cased and where it was not they just it didn't look right so i'm going to get a fairly even soaking of water on here nothing i'm not going to drench it i'm just going to get it uh, in the surface a little bit there and then the pattern i'm going to do i'll set that off to the side the pattern i'm going to do on here is going to be just like this little piece right here and i've got a couple stamps here it's um i don't even remember what these are what the pattern is called but a little uh, geometric pattern there and a very small camouflage tool in between there i don't have the exact same pattern that is in the um, the picture that santee sent me but that's the pattern i'm going to do around just that lower part i don't have to worry about doing up on the top here because that's all going to be covered by the suede now what i got to do though is i got to get my line established on there and in the picture across this part right here where this gets stitched to the holster there's two rows of the seed beads on there one of them is kind of a, a bigger bead and i've only got one size i think they're two millimeter beads so i'm just going to do one row all the way up around there and i i'm not going to do them on the back side i'll pick a spot somewhere here where i'll end because i want it to come around there same thing on this side so i'm going to be doing those parts right there and I was going to stitch the seed beads in with the stitches that go on there, but that's just going to be too difficult to pass that needle through all those layers of leather and put those beads on there. So I'm going to stitch the seed beads to the suede piece, and then I will sew this onto there. So I'm going to have two rows of stitches, one for the seed beads and one for the actual stitches that hold this onto here and wrap the whole thing together. This will be glued onto there because uh, I like for it to have a really good bond and it will be glued with um, contact cement so that it's, it's really a permanent bond on there. So I think what I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and get this done. Now I didn't measure anything out when I picked out the stamps I wanted to use. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna kind of wing it. I'm gonna start in the corner with this and that and just move around now you won't be able to see the back side because it's going to be hidden but i want this to be as symmetrical as i can get it so i'm just going to work at it like that
Not too bad for just a guess. Okay, that is a really tough job getting these in there. The spacing might be a little bit off. I think I got everything in a fairly straight line. I'm not sure if I got it straight with the uh, holster itself, but um, those are a pain to punch those little tiny holes in there and get all those tabs bent over there. And man, I hope they stay on there because once this is glued to the holster, that's it. I can't get behind it and fix them again. I did pre-punch all my holes there for the stitching. Now you can see the lines on there. And these are going to be for the little seed beads. Uh, this was an Amazon purchase. Uh, it does come with some needles. They're in this little deal right here. Come with a little bit of thread. And I really only need two colors for it. And I did skip putting the smallest of the spots on there. Because they actually make a tool to set these things. And I don't have one and they are a pain. All right, there are two needles that come with this kit, and this might be kind of tough to see, but this is what they call a big eye needle, and it's just like one long needle that's split just about all the way down the middle, and then there's a regular needle. Now, they're both pretty flexible, um, and they're both very, very fine, so I'm going to be very careful with them. I'm going to use the regular needle, and... I'm going to use the thread that they include with it, and it is just like a little bobbin of thread there, and it is a, um, a very fine thread, and it's supposed to be a pretty tough thread too because you don't want this thing coming apart on you. All right, um, I've never done these beats before, so it's going to be a learning experience for me. Okay, this has actually taken me several hours. Now, this is the first time I've ever beaded anything, and I've been listening to some YouTube videos, some tutorials on beading and stuff, and I wish I would listen to it a little bit sooner because you can see some of these beads are... It's not that I um, misaligned my holes. It's that I've done what they call crowding, and it causes the beads to want to buckle and move side to side and everything so my lines aren't nice and steady. So you can see right about here is where I started here and I'm talking about the spacing. And they said it's better to have wider spacing than it is too narrow because it causes this buckling when you're too narrow, when you've got them too close together. There's nowhere for the bead to go but to the side. So it really that causes a problem. So I've made my spacing a little bit bigger there uh, might get some little gaps between the beads. You will see a little bit of thread in there, but like uh, the one lady also said, beads are best admired from afar because you won't see things like this, you know, from a distance. At least I hope you won't. But I mean, this is a learning experience for me. I've never done the beading before and never been uh, taught how to do it uh, any certain way other than YouTube videos. So this is what I'm going for. Now I've got to finish going down here all the way across, at least halfway across with the beads, and then the rest of it is just gonna get sewn to the holster itself because I have punched the holes all the way across there in the uh, veg tan, which is, in suede, it's really hard to do because I cannot see the holes that I've punched. I can barely see them, but they're there. Anyways, I'm gonna keep on stitching these beads on and uh, it's gonna take a while. Now these last ones here, I tend to crowd those a little bit, but the rest of them are looking a whole lot straighter. Oh well, live and learn. Okay, so I've got it done from here. This is gonna be the center of the holster where it folds over to there. Now, I kind of adjusted my spacing. I still don't have it quite right. I got a little too big of gaps in there. Some of them I have tacked down between the two beads. 
A lot of these are done one single bead. Some of them are done two beads. Some of them over here at the beginning were done three beads at a time. And you can see I got some really funky uh, bead crowding going on there. This is a little better over here. I got a little too wide on some of these, but like I said, it's my first one. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to get this attached to here. And then I'm going to sew this directly to this. This will get sewn on the outside all the way around once I get the folded over and then um, go to close the holster up. So for right now, I'm going to get this on there and these holes, I'm sure, are not going to line up exactly. I will try my best to get them lined up because it'll make it easier to pass that needle through. And I'm going to have to pass it all the way through the uh, veg tan too, so that's going to be a pain. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. You can see where I got my spots, the tabs folded down there. I hope they stay like they're supposed to. Uh, my thread there for the beads, hopefully the... the um, Contact cement will keep that where it's supposed to be and I'm going to get these two glued together and then uh, continue with the beading. B-E-A-D-I-N-G, beading, not beating, although it is a beating too, I think. Okay, so I've got my bead sewn there. This part is through the suede. A lot of uh, bead crowding, so it is what it is. I didn't do too bad down here. Spaced my uh, stitches out a little bit more. I've got my, I've got everything sewn to there. I do not have this half sewn on there yet. And what I might do is just do my fringe up to here and then cut this piece off because this is going to be on the back side of the holster and you're not going to be able to see it anyways. Um, but I will need to stitch that and I will use a heavier thread because the, the thread for the beads is a very, very fine thread. And then what I'm going to do once I get, get all this made is I'm going to dip dye the whole thing. So it's going to stain my suede a little bit different. It's going to stain my um, veg tan, obviously. And then uh, I have to do a little bit of antiquing in here, I think. I'm going to try to go with a light brown-ish, sort of. And... Um, we're just going to see what it comes out like. Okay, I've got all my holes repunched through the suede there so I can see them. I got a little something goofy going on up here. Maybe it'll look all right, maybe it won't. I got the holes punched all the way through the welt there. And what I need to do now is I need to get this folded over. I'm going to wet it down just a little bit on the inside there. It makes it just a little easier to fold over. It softens that leather up some. I'm not going to soak it deeply. I'm just going to let it wick in there a little bit. And that'll help soften it up some so when I go to fold it, it'll fold just a little bit easier. Then I'm going to have to get my glue on there. That's another reason I didn't want to get it wet over there. I'm going to have to get my glue on there and get it to where I can uh, like I, I like to uh, glue and stitch. It just makes it that much stronger. And all I can do is keep my fingers crossed that I actually made this thing big enough for the gun to fit down in there. The welt helps out a lot. I'm going to have to do some trimming up on there and slicking of the edges and stuff. But it's, uh, like I said, this one is a learning process for me. And um, I'm just going to go from there. All right, all glued up. And I'm going to let this... Uh, Tack up a little bit, get my pins through there, and get this thing stuck together. I just want to make sure I get this thick end as close to being perfect as I can. The better these holes line up, the easier it makes it to sew together. And people have asked me what these are that I put in there. These are actually blowgun darts that, uh, you know, for a blowgun. Uh, they're extremely sharp on the end, so you really got to be careful with it that you don't stab yourself with them. I know this because I've done it a few times. 
Now that's going to be pretty wide open at the bottom. I may put a stitch or two down there at the bottom, but I'm going to start from this end when I'm doing my stitching. I'm going to start back at least one hole, go to the end, and then go back again. That makes it a little bit stronger there. Instead of just having one loop through there, it makes it a little bit stronger to hold it together. So now it is stuck, and I am going to go ahead and pull these out and start stitching. Now one of the things you want to do when you're putting your second needle through the same hole, you want to make sure pull that thread over to the side. Make sure you don't pierce your thread. That happens from time to time too. And if you've got it pulled tight, it's not always an issue. But sometimes if you pierce that thread when you go to tighten it down, you can't tighten it. because one thread will be locked inside the other. All right, now I'm going back in the hole where I started. So I've already got one loop of thread through there. Now I've got three strands through there. Now everything from here on out is gonna be one thread through the hole. Well, two threads through the hole. All right, I'm gonna get this set up on my stitching pony so it's not flopping all over the place. That right there is what I call cutting it way too close for comfort. Okay, so there it is, all nice and done up. Got the little spots on the front, got the fringe on it. I went ahead and left the fringe on the back and I went ahead and wet molded it and it fits really nice. I mean, it just glides right in there. There's only one problem. As I was finishing up all my stitching, I realized there is no way to attach this to a belt because Somebody forgot to put the strap on the back of it. So now that I've got it all sewn together, I've got to cut it all back apart. It's not going to be fun, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Hey, learn from the mistakes, right? <sighs> okay, I've got the bell loop on the back there now. So now I actually have a way to carry this thing. And I'm going to have to probably wet mold it again since I, uh, yeah, kind of tweaked it around a little bit. So, yep, I will get it all wrapped up in plastic again and uh, let it dry thoroughly. But I've got the loop on the back now. And then, like I said, I'm going to dunk this whole thing in dye and that will dye this, it will dye the suede too, and it will dye the, uh, the loop on the back, the inside of it, the whole nine yards, and then we'll see what it looks like after that. Okay, there's the holster all done up. I already had went ahead and did the dye. I used a Feebing's um, Light Brown Pro dye. It's an alcohol-based dye, and it uh, has quite the odor to it. My wife does not care for it too much. And it's still just a little bit damp. The color hasn't quite evened out yet. Uh, the suede is, you know, kind of, the color's kind of muddled on there. And really, to me, it doesn't look that bad. It kind of helps it look a little more rustic. Um, this is my first time doing the glass beads on anything. And uh, although they started out with a lot of bead crowding and kind of not don't look so well, they do not look very well. The bottom part there, um, I adjusted my spacing a little bit and they started to look a lot better after that. The fringe is all cut. I did leave it on the back side there too. I thought it would just look kind of odd if I just cut that off there, but um, 
It's not too bad, I don't think. I think the fringe may have caused the dye to uh, be a little more uneven because it's a little darker from where the end of the fringe is up to the sewing line there. Um, not that bad. I did leave it out in the sun a little bit to kind of dry off. I did fix my one huge mistake where I forgot to put the belt loop on there. Um, but there's plenty of other little mistakes on there. But like I said, uh, like the one lady said in the one video I was watching, beads are best admired from afar because the farther away, the better they look. Anyways, I did have to re-wet mold it and everything, and it fits like a glove. Almost zero retention on there. This holds just a little bit, but not very much at all. I do like the way it fits the 1851 Navy. Um, if I had thought about it, I'd have probably made it to fit my 1872 open top. Who knows, now that I've got a little practice in, maybe I'll do one for it too. Um, the spots that are set on here, these are a pain. They are set only in the suede, so I don't have to worry about the metal tabs on the inside of the holster. But the spots, um, you have to cut an individual hole for each one of those little prongs on there and then stick them through there and then bend them over. They do make a tool, and I will probably in the future invest in one of those tools to set the spots. You can use it for snaps and rivets and everything too. And it sure makes them a lot easier and more successful when you go to put them in. And a lot faster also. But anyways, there it is. There's my beaded fringed holster, kind of like the one in the picture that Santee sent me. I like the looks of it. I think it turned out pretty good, I guess, for my first one like this. And like I said, I am not a professional holster maker. It's just a hobby for me. But it fits nice. It looks nice. And uh, I kind of like it. Anyways, if you could hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos, hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.